Hello TL Travelers and welcome back to the TL Travel YouTube channel. For those of you who are new to my channel, welcome. And for those of you who have been here for a while, welcome back. It's great to see you. Today I am doing a, another story time video for you guys because you seem to have been enjoying those lately. So for this story time, I am going to take it back to before I was on YouTube and before I was really documenting my travels for my six month trip around South America. And I am going to tell you the story of the struggle that was uh, our Argentinian visa. I will tell you right now, it was <sighs> definitely one of my low points. So even when I Google this now, and I'm going to say that it's been five years, safely five years uh, since we were in Argentina, I still can't even seem to make sense of this visa situation um, just in trying to refresh my memory. I'm not sure if it's the same now or if it's different, but basically what we were told when I went to get my visa for Argentina was that it would be about 95 American dollars for Canadian and that would get you 90 days of travel and you could go in and out of the country, multiple entries as many times as you wanted. So for us, that was what we needed, A, being Canadian and B, because we had planned our sort of map of how we were gonna travel by going back and forth over the border between Argentina and Chile all the way south so that we could see everything that we wanted to see on either side of the border. And that was the, the route that was most recommended. So we were like, yeah, this is perfect. So I applied for this visa for Derek and I and when I got the visa paper, it really did not have very much information on it. It had our names, our passport numbers, uh, the date of issue, and then it also had an expiry date on it. And how it was explained to me was that this expiry date that was listed there was the date that the visa had to be used by for the first time. So basically I would receive this visa, I could have the visa until whenever, as long as I used it for the first time to enter Argentina before that expiry date. And then from the first date that I used it, we would be able to use it for 90 days. That was what I was told. That was what was confirmed to me at the embassy. Swear to God, that's what I was told. You can see where this is going. So before that expiry date came around, we landed in Argentina, no problem. We traveled across the border twice with no problems. And then we were on our very last border crossing back into Argentina from Chile because we were going to Ushuaia. And two days prior, two days prior or three days prior, we had used the exact same visa to get into Argentina going like the other way. So we like crossed in and crossed out basically. And when we had used our visa there, we had explained that we were crossing into Chile and then crossing back into Ushuaia and no one said anything about this expiry date. They looked at our visa, they said, yep, yep, that's fine went on our way. So we were on a bus with, I don't know, 30 other people who are also heading south. And we cross the border, we leave Chile, we get our exit stamp, then it's about a 20 minute, I wanna say it was like 20 minutes. It was a far drive by bus to get sort of like across this deserted land of limbo. So we get there and we wait in line for a while. We get up to the front, we show them our passports, we show them our stamps, we show them our visa. And the guy says, no, you can't get into Argentina. And we're like, what? And he's like, well, the expiry date on this on this visa was yesterday. And we're like, yeah, well, no, the expiry date, like to use it for the first time was yesterday, but we've been using it, like we used it for the first time well ago. Like we still have probably 60 days on it that we can travel on it, no problem. And he's like, no, 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 that's not how it works. We're like, okay, well, that's how we were told by the embassy that it worked and no one told us otherwise. And his English was not so good, which like, I'm not trying to be like a stuck up Canadian English traveler. We totally get that like, not everybody needs to know English and that it's up to us to also know some of the language. And we did, at that point our Spanish was like, it was, it was all right. But we did enlist the help of someone else who was on the bus who spoke English and Spanish very fluently to sort of translate for us and see if we couldn't get it sorted. So this guy, bless his heart, so helpful. He was translating for us and trying to explain that like this is, you know, that this is what we were told, that we weren't trying to, you know, pull the wool over their eyes or anything like that. We just wanted to know what we had to do to get into the country. It's it's just one day expired. Like, could they not just maybe let us through given the fact that there had been such a big old miscommunication? 
they would not let us in. So we're in a position now where we're holding up a busload of people and they're giving us all of these options. Okay, well, you can get in a car and we can drive you back to Chile, figure out where you're going from there, go back into the country. So the other option was for us to get back on the bus while everybody from our bus waited patiently at the border, drive 25 minutes back into Chile. Why couldn't they just do it for us there? They didn't have Wi-Fi. We couldn't get our new visa because we had to apply for it online and we couldn't get it at the Argentinian border because like border patrol, because they didn't have internet to allow us to get on and get the visa. So our bus driver drove us back to Chile for the sole purpose of using their internet at their exit, like customs office or whatever, to get the visa like online there, purchase it online there, have it printed out, and then bring it back to get back in. So of course that took like an hour and a half. The poor, poor people on our bus, I felt so, so bad. And we got back on the bus and really everybody was very kind. A lot of people, you know, gave us a little round of applause, like, yay, you know, we're glad that you're fine. And I think that having that like translator friend there was really very helpful as well because he sort of explained it to everybody on the bus what was going on and they knew that it wasn't necessarily something that like, that we had done just by being like stupid misinformed tourists that like showed up without a visa and that like they knew that we felt really, really bad about it. But the kicker of all of this is that when we went back to the Chilean border to go online and apply for new visas and pay for new visas, might I add, another 95 US dollars a person, the guy at the Chilean border looked at our visa and was like, no, this should be fine. So yeah, that's how that went down. And that is probably the only time that we've ever knock on wood, in all of our travels been like turned away at a border or had like really big issues at a border like that. And so lesson of the day right there and a lesson that I learned and will remember forever is to like double, triple, quadruple check the information that you are given. No matter where you are traveling, if you call the embassy and they say, oh, this is how it is, double check because that person could be new. That person could be misunderstanding your question or they could just, I don't know, want to ruin your trip and cost you an extra $200. You can't always rely on one source when it comes to something so very important. So that was the story of our Argentinian visa blunder. If you've ever, bleh, if you've ever experienced anything like this in your travels or had any issues with miscommunications, uh, throughout your journeys, be feel, be feel, be feel free, feel, <laughs> feel free to leave your story in the discussion comments below because I would love to hear about it. I love to hear about your stories and until next time, stay great and travel safe and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.